Hello, this is the last of the set of standards for grade six. We're gonna end with statistics and probability. Here we have a list of those integral parts of statistics um, that we need to cover. Um, most of it is um, identifying what is a good statistical question and then further how to represent that data using number lines, dot plots, histograms, and box plots, which some of you may be familiar with box and whisker plots. So we need to determine what are good statistical questions. A statistical question is one that can be answered by collecting data where there will be a variability in that data. Take a moment, write down your guesses. Which of the following are statistical questions? Pause the video, make your best guess, and then we'll go through them. How many days are there in March? This is not a statistical question because we can simply count the number of days and it will always be the same for March. How old is your dog? This is again, not a statistical question because you're ask, answering with a single number. However, when you look at how old the dogs are that live on the street, this is gathering multiple sets of data. So this is a statistical question. What proportion of the students at your school like watermelons? Again, a good statistical question because you're collecting data pieces. However, do you like watermelons is yes or no question. So no, because you're only getting a single set, a single data point. How many bri brinks, bricks are on this wall? That would not be a good one because you're only talking about one particular wall. If we asked a question like how many bricks are on a set of walls, then we could use that as data. What was the temperature at noon today at City Hall? This is also not a good piece of data as you're getting one single number at one point in time. One way to use a statistical graph is to visually represent a data set's shape, center, and spread. Tyler asked his classmates, how many times do you go to the movies each month? Then he recorded their responses in a dot plot. How could he describe the shape, center, and spread? When we talk about the shape, we have the following. Is it normal? Is it skewed left where there are more dots on the left? Or is it skewed right? Or there are less dots on the left on, on the right. So I see this one as skewed right because there are less dots on the right hand side and things kind of tend to stay on on the on the left. When we talk about the center, we want to know where most of the data is clustered together. So I would say around two or between one and three, most of the data is centered. When we talk about spread, we want to know how varied the data points are. Most of Tyler's data is spread from zero to five. And since nine or 10 are far from the other pieces of data, we call these outliers. Describe the center spread and shape of the graph below. How many pencils do you lose each week? Center, most of the data is around three to seven pencils. The spread, the cluster is from one to nine and I see there are no outliers. I feel that the shape data is symmetric, so it's a normal distribution. It is not skewed one way or the other. The average recorded amount of water in cups that the cat Oreo drinks per week every day is as follows, three, three, four, five, four, four, six. There are three types of averages, mean, median, and mode. To find the mean, we add all of our data up and divide by how many data points there are. So I add three plus three plus four plus five plus four plus four plus six divided by seven. So I get 29 divided by seven, which is about 4.14. To get the median, what we have to do is first order our data from smallest to greatest. The median is the one that's directly in the middle. So to find it, we start taking and crossing off one um, piece of data from either side until we get to the middle. 
So I see our median is four. The mode is the one that occurs the most. So I see four is the one that occurs the most. The central tendency of a data set can be described using on these measures. Ashley wrote down how much money she found in her pockets every time she did laundry. Find the measures of central tendency for her data set. Take a moment to pause the video and we'll come together. To find the mean, we add all of our pieces together. So 10 plus 2 plus 2 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 divided by 6 because there are 6 pieces of data gives us 14 divided by 6, which gives us about 2.33. Again, the median, we start on the outside and we work our way in. Now this time I have two different pieces of data in the middle, so we'll find the average of those two pieces. So 2 plus 0 is 2, and 2 divided by the 2 is itself 1. And 0 happens the most often. Mrs. Turner scored all the math quizzes. She decided to give everyone five extra points and recalculated the mean, median, and mode. Which of the following would happen? Would the mode stay the same? Would the median increase by five, the mean would decrease by five, or the shape of the data set would change? Well, the mode wouldn't change because all we would do would be adding five to each number. So by adding five to each number, it's still the same data just multiplied by a factor of five. The median would also increase by five because the numbers would just shift but we're not changing how many numbers that we actually have. And finally the mean would decrease by five is not true and neither of the shape would stay the same. A student is 54 inches tall. How does she fit into the data as a class? Here are her classmates' information. Let's compare the mean. So the mean is we have to add all of our data pieces together. So I have 46 plus 50 plus 54 plus 54 plus 54, since there are three of them, plus 55 plus 55 plus 55 plus 55 for four of those, plus 56 and 56, 58 and 61. Dividing that by 13 pieces of data, we get about 54.5. The median of the data is 55, and we can get that by crossing off one piece of data from each side. I get to the end here, and I have three 55s. Therefore, the median must be 55. The mode of the data, the one that happens the most, is also 55. So when I compare the student's 54-inch height, to all of my data points, I see that the student is shorter than the mean, the median, and the mode. Students always come to the principal's office and say that teachers never tell them they are doing anything wrong before giving out detention, which is a true statement that the principal could say to change the student's mind. It looks like all of our options are talking about in mean, median, and mode. So let's go ahead and find the mean, median, and mode before we can identify which is the correct statement. So the mean, I have, of the number of warnings, there are two that are one. There are 10 two warnings. I have 12 three warnings and I have six four warnings. So instead of saying one plus one plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two, et cetera, I kind of use some, our properties of multiplication and what multiplication means to simplify. I therefore get about 2.73 um, for the number of warnings students receive before they get into uh, detention. The median is the middle. So again, I went and crossed off I ended up with a, a bunch here in, in the threes left, so three would be the median. And then the one that happens the most is the mode, so the one that happens the most is three. Now we can go back and look at our options that we have, A, B, C, and D. The amount of teacher warnings is almost eight times. Well, the mean is not eight times, so that's not true. The median and mode of the numbers of the teacher's warnings is six times. Well, mean, median, and mode is not six. 
The mean amount of warnings is two times. Still not quite correct. The median and mode of the number of teacher warnings is three. That is our correct answer. A pet store has the following numbers of fish in seven different aquariums. Six, 12, seven, five, 11, six, and nine. Compare the mean, median, mode, and range of the fish in the aquarium. The pet store owner doesn't want any aquarium to have too many more fish than another. Which data measure would he be interested in? Use the grid to sketch the number of fish in each aquarium using a separate row for each. So I'm gonna list my data here, and then I'm going to fill in how many, and I use different colors for a moment here. So our first aquarium has five, then the next two have six, then seven, nine, 11 and 12. What is the mode of the data? Which is the one that happens most frequently? That would be six. Six happens twice here. What is the median of the data? Again, we can either cross off bars or cross off here until we get one single number or have to find the, the average of the two middle numbers. So we get seven. What is the range of the data? And range is the largest minus the smallest, so seven is our range. Resketch the amount of fish in each row so that each row has an equal number of fish. So I'm gonna start borrowing from these heavier sided pieces and bringing them down um, to start filling and see if I can't make these all equivalent in size. So I took a few from the red and the purple and brought them down and I'm just kind of moving pieces around so that I create an equivalent set of data. Each row now has eight fish. Let's see how that compares to the mean. So to calculate the mean, we add all of our data, divide by how many they are, and I also get eight. So eight is the process of by moving our pieces around is, by, is the process of making them all even. How can we calculate the mean absolute deviation? Flower florists collected data on the length of time in days their flower lasts before wilting. What is the mean absolute deviation of this data set? So I have our data points. We need to know what the mean is in general. So I calculate the mean and I see that that is 10.5. In my table then, I will take my data point and subtract the mean. And I'll do this all the way, the way down here. And then I'm going to take that mean and identify the absolute value of that mean. Remember the absolute value is the distance away from zero. So all of my negatives go away. So here I've put the absolute value of my data. The next part in finding the absolute mean absolute deviation is to actually find the average of the absolute values. So I add them all up together and I still divide by six because there's six data points and we get one. Since the one is a pretty small number, we can say that this data set has numbers that are pretty close to the mean. The standard deviation is the spread of how far away each data point is from the mean. Andy ordered seven games from the internet. He recorded the number of days it took each package to arrive in the data set below. Identify and interpret the mean absolute value. So there's my data points. We need to find the mean, which is about 10 and a half. I take each data point and subtract 10 and a half and get a bunch of data. And then I take the absolute value of all of those datas. I now need to find the mean of all of our absolute values. Notice we're still dividing by seven because it is still seven sets of data. I see this time it's about 4.9. Since the mean absolute value is larger, it can be said that the data points are spread further apart from the mean. 